I will say that it all comes back to when I think about my education here, um, being detail-oriented, um, analysis, it really whatever path you take, whether it's in the corporate world or in the academic world, um, it, it sort of all comes back to what skills made you successful in your history major. And a lot of it is you kind of have to do writing, analysis, I and mean, there's a lot of majors here that have sort of similar skill sets that you hone, but with history specifically, I found that those were the, the skills that helped me no matter what career I, I had. So obviously my piece of advice as you're starting to look for jobs is it's okay if that entry level or first level job is not your passion or it's not your your BLN and all this is where I want to end up. Um, because what I found, and both in my experience and then talking to coworkers and um, just friends that are in the same position, that once you're you're in the door with the company, if you do your job well and you're a strong worker, there is usually a lot of flexibility to start moving into something that you want to do. So you know, as you're as you're meeting with companies and you're you can see kind of what that company does in the breadth of what that company offers, and if there's something in the company that looks interesting to you potentially give it a shot because it's pretty easy to get there um, once you're in the door. So a solid foundation of, of skill sets, research, writing, you know, um, conversation, public speaking, you know, all of it really made me more confident and that's also what you're selling. You're not just selling your skill sets in a job, you're selling your confidence as well. So, and you, you saying you can do this job. You know, I think if you're lucky, you will come across a company that just that sees the overarching value of a higher education, and in their mind, they equate, okay, you, you have a college degree, therefore, you probably have, you know, X, Y, and Z skills of being able to communicate and being able to think things through and, and things like that. Um, so in that case, it's a little bit easier because it's not as hard of a sell. Um, you know, the approach that worked for me, for better or for worse, was I just called it out right away. You know, why would I be selling buyer places? And then you're able to, just like Maria said, start talking about those skills. And, you know, when you're right out of school, sometimes it's easier to draw it right back in and say, you know, like, well, when I did this in school or this. And then, you know, as you get older, then that becomes, well, at this previous job. But right now, obviously, school is your job. So um, I wouldn't be afraid to draw on the experiences you have right now. And um, I don't know. I, as I've looked and talked to other people, I think more and more companies are being a little bit more open with you have a you have a degree, that's a great starting point. Now tell me why this is a good fit for your position as opposed to not even entertaining, you know, the fact of having a history degree or some other um, I think they recognize the quality of education from this both schools yeah. as well and that will really help you. I mean that's half of yeah. that's half the battle. <laughs> um, I have to say, I never really had to defend the fact that I was a history major. Um, librarianship is kind of a, a natural progression. Um, but it's funny how often I've had to um, defend my history major in real life. Um, you know, there are a surprising amount of people out there who are like, a history major? Oh, well, I didn't know you could become a librarian with that. Like, the, you know, so many people will ask, like, Oh, so you're going to go into teaching, or oh, you went into teaching. You know, so it, it, um, I've actually encountered that more often than anything in the workplace. Um, in fact, even with the library, um, with the library studies masters, a lot of people are like, oh, you need a master's degree for that. Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's it's not necessarily a workplace issue, but you know, just be prepared to go out there and say, hey, I've got some valuable skills, people. Like, I learned some stuff. These were, I, I attended a great school, um, you know, history majors are just as valuable as everybody else, I think more so, so. I really thought I wanted to be in the nonprofit world, um, I guess, like, I think part of it was, I had in my head, I'm a history major, and therefore, there is a finite amount of careers that that then lends itself to, um, so it was a really good way, um, just for me to be able to kind of test it out without, you know, committing to something or things like that. And so it was just um, a project working on um, just archiving in a kind of a mini exhibit. Um, and it was, like I said, it was great because it was it's kind of like real world experience.
experience, but it really just taught me that this was not where I wanted to spend most of my time, and then being okay with letting that go. You know, I think um, that's what I've definitely been learning over the past five years, is it's okay to say I don't like this, or I'm not good at this, or I'm gonna go pursue my strengths and passions elsewhere. So um, it's really okay to let things go. And,